in the shivering sea north of Essos, there are many queer tales of the creatures that roam the frozen waters. How far this frozen vastness extends, none can say. No man of Westeros has ever sailed further east than the Thousand Islands, but men and women of the east, who have ventured too far north, have encountered treacherous howling winds and enormous icebergs that could destroy even the most well-built ships and frozen seas that extend on for miles and miles. Most who have tried to sail north through the Shivering Sea have perished, and many have tried. Those who lived have returned south half dead from frost, and the white waste called the Shivering Sea only grows larger in winter. Out of the Shivering Sea come whispers of the Cannibal Bay, where ships are said to enter only to find themselves trapped forever when the sea freezes hard behind them. Tales of dead men in the water, drowned spirits who rise at the night to drag the living deep down into the depths of the dark blue frozen sea. Stories of pale blue mist that moves across the waters, mist so cold that any ships that pass through it are frozen instantaneously. Of course, too, there is talk of merfolk, pale gray of flesh with black scales. They are said to be far more vicious than their cousins to the south, and none can forget the tales of those enormous winged beasts said to be made of living ice. They possess eyes of blue crystal and breath that is the essence of cold. The great ice dragons of the Shivering Sea. It is said that an ice dragon's breath is a chill so terrible that it can freeze a human solid in a fraction of a second. These beasts appear to be direct counterparts to the dragons of old Valyria, other than the fact that the size of an ice dragon is said to be thrice that of the Valyrian dragons. Whilst the dragons of the Fourteen Flames were fire-made flesh, these are ice-made flesh. Some claim that the tales of ice dragons are mere fantasies, stories made up by superstitious sailors, delusional and half-frozen. But it was suggested by Archmaester Margrate that the many mentions of the Cannibal Bay and the freezing blue mist could be explained as warped reports of the activity of ice dragons. The way the ice dragons are described in A Song of Ice and Fire is indistinguishable from the way they are described in George R. R. Martin's short story, The Ice Dragon. Both creatures are ice made flesh and melt when slain. It is known that sailors from half a hundred nations have glimpsed these cold monsters throughout the centuries in the Shivering Sea. Too many reports not to be taken seriously. Many sea creatures swim in the waters of the Shivering Sea. A great beast such as an ice dragon would have plenty of food to feed on there. Given George R. R. Martin's recurring use of the ice dragon and the title of this series itself, it is not a stretch to say that dragons of ice made flesh will appear eventually in our story. In a world of balance and cycles, it makes sense to have a direct counterpart to the side of fire. The balance must be maintained. It would be foolish not to mention the others of legend here. The White Walkers, like the Ice Dragons, are said to be made of living ice. They ride on the winds of winter, white mist that comes howling out of the north. Their eyes are pale blue, just like those of the Ice Dragon. Could whatever power that awakened the others in the land of always winter have also birthed the Ice Dragons? Could it be the same power that is worshipped by the wildlings in the far north, the gods of snow and ice and darkness? Whatever the truth, it cannot be denied that the magic of Ice Dragons is described eerily similar to the magic of the others. Whether the two are connected can only be speculated, though in my opinion it is greatly suggested. 
And as for the Merlings and the drowned spirits of the Watchers, we know that the stories of Merlings and Deep Ones exist throughout the known world. Their presence seems undeniable. As for the drowned spirits, they seem to be a reference to the dead marshes of J.R.R. Tolkien's lore. But they may have been mentioned in A Song of Ice and Fire before the world of ice and fire. In Jon Snow's letter from Hard Home, Attempt to take the Storm Crow defeated, six crew dead, many wildlings, eight ravens left, dead things in the water. Send help by lands, seas racked by storms. How's it going, guys? I just wanted to take this time to mention that I am doing a giveaway of God Emperor of Dune, which is my favorite book in the series. All you need to do to qualify to win is to comment on my most recent Dune video, The Ultimate Guide to Dune Part 1, which is part of a series of videos that I'm doing right now. I'm also giving away a copy of David Lynch's Dune on Blu-ray. This is available only to patrons of $1 or more. Of course, with Patreon, you get access to tons of exclusive A Song of Ice and Fire content that's not on YouTube. So thanks for watching and listening, everyone. Peace out.